Hi guys! So I am back to talk to you about the lovely postpartum care after having your baby. Obviously mine is still in here, but I have three other little ones and I've had them back to back to back. So I am no way a... Like, I do not know it all. <laughs> I really don't know it all because I've had all vaginal births. So everything I'll be talking about is mostly mostly discussions on vaginal births, not on C-sections. Um, but the other things are questions that I've had from some people just to kind of see if I know the answer or if I can look it up. So if you do not know the answer, please go to your doctor, talk to them. Definitely have an open line of communication. If you do not have a doula or a midwife, look into those because those are super cool. <laughs> okay, so we'll get down to the nitty gritty. When you're in the hospital, you bleed a lot. I mean, this is not your normal heavy period that, I mean, it's, it's just bad. <laughs> there's a lot of blood clots. There's a lot of blood. Um, you have to change your pad, or at least for me with my first two, I had to change my pad every 15, 20 minutes. It's just that bad. <laughs> it does decrease, though. But it can pick back up after you think it's left and it's gone. It'll pick its happy self right back up and just show itself to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so with the items that I have here today, most were provided from my hospital. I still have them from Silas's birth because I've always just wanted to keep them on hand for other things that could happen. So if you do not know what to bring to the hospital or you do not know what your hospital provides, please go talk to them. It is always best to talk to them instead of bringing extra stuff that you really don't need. You may want them, but you may not need them. Because if you get stuff that you technically already paid for, you might as well use it. Okay, so the first thing is <laughs> these humongous pads that go under your butts. They're literally humongous. These are good to catch the blood after you've had a baby. They put them underneath you constantly at the hospital. It's always good to take some extra home because say if you don't use them when you're at home, you have that toddler who keeps paying the bed or starts puking up in the middle of the night. These are good to have, let me tell you. The next thing is the dreaded net underwear. They come in two sizes. They come in like a one size and a plus size. So if you know you're a plus size woman, please just go ahead and save yourself the misery and say, hey, um, I need the bigger underwear, <laughs> please, because they have larger leg holes and a bigger band. <coughs> These are the dreaded underwear. <laughs> I mean, they are, they are beautiful with its light little white little ribbons and little polka dots, but they're free-ish and you can throw them away. I always like to keep these on hand after baby because, say if it comes back again, I don't want to ruin my underwear. Okay, the next thing is the ice pads. Some people make their own ice pads, which you can do. You can go to Pinterest and look up pad sickles. You can and you use normal pads, witch hazel, aloe vera, um, lavender essential oils, <coughs> and I think that's it. Um, and you can make them that way, make your own for at home. I just use these because they're easy, they pop, and you can throw them away and you didn't waste your time. This little pad, and my hospital provided these. You literally just pop them, put them in your undies on top of your pad, and just go to sleep. <laughs> Please, sleep. But these are pretty cool. And make sure to take extra home because, say, if you have a toddler or a baby, or you fall and you need an ice pack, super easy to use. And I remember... When we had just had Elijah, our air AC went out, and it was it was unbelievably hot for April. So I surrounded him with these. Why not? <laughs> the next is they'll give you these in the hospital, but go ahead and keep some on hand for you because you're going to want them and you're going to need them, and they're going to tell you to take them. Next is the gas relief. Just take them, <laughs> and then your stool softeners. When you have a baby, it hurts to go poop. Um, and I mean not like you're constipated. I mean painful. Um, when you have to poop for the first time, 
set aside time because it's going to take a while and it may not happen on the first try. Always, they have the squatty potties. Always elevate your feet a little bit above your chest area kind of thing. Just get them up there and just sit there and hope somebody's there to watch the baby or bring the baby in there with you because it'll probably be a while. <laughs> I, it just, it, pooping sucks after pregnancy. Um, you thought it sucked during pregnancy, say when you had to go a lot or you couldn't go at all. It really sucks after labor. And these are some things that people do not tell you. Next thing is something I bought for myself because in the hospital they provide you a little peri bottle, but they kind of suck. They, uh, the peri bottle completely just squirts up. There's nothing to help make it go towards your badge, nothing. So, I bought the Free to Baby for day, for net, for day. I think it's for day. I just bought this, and it's open. It comes in a little handy waterproof bag, so if you want to take it with you somewhere, take this to the hospital. <laughs> if you have not seen my What's in My Hospital Bag delivery video, I will post that at the very, very end so you can go see that because I also have talked about this. <coughs> so, the peri ball that they gave you is kind of just like this, but it's straight up. This peri bottle, you pull it up, you put it into your badge, like here's your badge, or there's your badge, and you can squirt it up. Literally, it just squirts. And use warm water. Do not use cold water. But there you go. Super easy and simple, and it just kind of, it's got a little seal suction here. <laughs> I love this. And they also have, the Fruity Baby also makes a product for when they get to toddlerhood and potty training. It looks just like this, so save it for them. Because you can use this to wash off their little bits after pooping or whatever instead of running through so many different wipes. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> We're actually potty training our two-year-old right now. He decided to do it, not us. So we were like, okay, and he's almost done. It's taken about a week and a half. Why not? Okay, so I have a whole bunch of different little questions from people asking me if I knew what any of this was. Okay, so when you're in the hospital, make sure and ask for help if you intend to breastfeed ask for help for breastfeeding because even if you think you're doing it right there may be a better way of doing it you never know especially if you're a first-time mom ask for help if you are exhausted in the hospital and you just need some sleep send the baby to the nursery that's what they're there for to help you get the best recovery possible so send them if you need to do not feel bad because other mothers have done it you do not need to be super mom within the first 24 hours of having a baby you had a baby, <laughs> a large object coming out of your vagina. So ask for help, <laughs> a lot of help. Also, do lots of skin to skin, regardless if you are going to breastfeed. Skin to skin helps the baby regulate its body temperature. It makes a happy baby. And I don't know about you, but I want a very happy baby. <laughs> I pray for a happy baby <laughs> because Skin to skin also helps you recover. It's comfortable, they sleep amazingly. And sometimes babies cry a lot. They just cry and they don't stop for whatever reason. Even if they're not hungry, they're fed, they're, I mean, everything's done, everything is perfect. They've come out of an almost traumatic situation. They cry. Next is take the medicine. I don't know what you will get, like when you're in the hospital, people get different things from different hospitals, but take the pain medicine. You do not want to, especially if you have a tear, <laughs> you do not want to get in so much pain that it takes the pain medicine longer to work. So just take the medicine when they say to take it because you want to get better. And the better you get, the faster you get. I mean... <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't want to get better. <laughs> also, um, somebody had told me, no visitors for the first 12 hours, give or take, however you feel on it. But if people are pushing to come visit you and you do not want them to, do not let them. Just flat out tell the nurses, no, I'm having no visitors, even if they show up, because you need to rest, you need to sleep, 
Do not expect to entertain the whole family when you just pushed out a baby. It's not reasonable. When I had my first baby, James, I had the whole family there. <laughs> not necessarily again like what I wanted, but it just happened. Elijah, a lot less people, but still the whole family. Silas, I didn't tell anybody I went to labor. That was the best recovery and birth I have ever had. It was faster, it went smoother, I was able to rest. The only people that came to see us were Michael's grandparents and my parents with our kids. That was it. It was the best recovery. Just, just say no to visitors if you do not want them. Don't be afraid to say no. This is your time and your baby's time. The next is, do not put scented soap on your lady bits if you've had a tear. It burns. I know this from experience when I tore with James. Also, um, postpartum wise, after you have the baby, your hormones, you think maybe they'll go back to normal. They don't. They get worse, or at least most women, they get worse, as well as night sweating. Night sweating after after baby it feels like you have literally peed yourself <laughs> you will wake up covered in sweat i mean literally soaking wet it's nasty <laughs> and you, you just feel like crap so when you first come home put one of these under you <laughs> and because you're probably gonna have to change about a couple times at night because it literally feels like you peed yourself <laughs> also your vagina will go back to normal don't look at it. Don't touch it when you have to. But it will go back to normal. I mean, it's swollen. Um, it's just a hot mess. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> also, eat foods that are good for your recovery and also good for breastfeeding. Drink a ton of water. Always fill it up. Um, if you need to, set a timer on your phone. That way you can remember to drink tons of water and eat healthy food. Eat food that is good for for you, but not only for baby if you're breastfeeding. So just kind of put those two into play, especially if you're breastfeeding, drink a lot. You want that milk to come in and you want it to be good milk. Next, lifting your toddler after you have a baby. I have never been put on restrictions for lifting my baby unless I have a C-section. Then you have restrictions. <coughs> Excuse me. After I had the vaginal births with the boys, I always lifted them as soon as I came home. They don't understand that mom just had a baby. I mean, well, they to an extent. But mom just had a baby. You can lift them. If you feel like you shouldn't lift them, then don't. But you can lift them. You can lift them as much as you want. Just aid with caution and try not to. Then sex was you should wait six to eight weeks for having sex after baby just to let your vagina recover even if you want to have sex there are other ways to sexually please each other than to have sex <laughs> if he doesn't understand that you've just pushed out a baby out of your vagina then you need to have a talk because he shouldn't push that on you if he is shouldn't. Then working out depends on your level of activity before baby. If you had a great activity level before baby, work out. Work out like crazy if you want to, but stop if you need to. You had nine months to get this way. It can take nine months to get it off. Some people it doesn't. It didn't for me. <laughs> Then, let's see, oh, encapsulate your, uh, <laughs> encapsulate your placenta. If you don't know what that is, look it up, contact a doula, and they can give you a whole lot more information than I can. I'm doing it for the benefits of breastfeeding, as well as postpartum hormonal help. <laughs> and, da da da, sorry, I'm going through the list. Next, postpartum depression. I had postpartum depression severely bad with James, our first. I have not had it since, 
So just because you had it one time does not mean you'll have it again. But when you do have postpartum depression, you feel, I mean, everybody feels something different. Mine was very severe. Um, but you feel like you just, you can't get up in the morning. You can't do anything. Or you do the, or with mine, I did the bare minimum and everything else. It just fell apart. Ask for help. Take the medicine if you need to. I didn't take it. It just eventually went away. I probably should have taken it. <laughs> I've had some pregnancy depression, but I've not had postpartum depression since James, thank God. Then we have, okay, so I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this, so I'm probably going to botch it. It's the dis, 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 <laughs> I'll post it below in the description because I don't know how to say this. If you plan on working out, have somebody look at that to make sure yours is not bad or you have a gap. It's in your tummy, like right around your belly button, where the muscles have separated with pregnancy. If you plan to work out and your muscles are separated like nobody's business, you are actually going to be doing more harm than good. So you might as well just go get it checked out, make sure the gap is closed, and if it's not, go through the process of getting it closed. It can be simple and it can be really hard, but go through that process because you don't want to make things worse than they really are. And that is why some people cannot lose that baby weight or have that little belly punch because they haven't taken that, like, haven't taken care of it. Okay, so <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> also baby wear, like baby wear your baby when you're at the house. Put them in a wrap, put them in a carrier, and snuggle them really close to you. Skin to skin. Lots of skin to skin. If you do plan on breastfeeding, contact now, before baby, um, a lactation consultant in case you do have questions. That way, if you need to contact somebody, you know who to call at 2 a.m. If, if they allow you to. <laughs> if you need help. Because you don't want to get in a bad spot and then have to wait and wait to get out of that bad spot. Okay, so I think I'm off my soapbox, and I think I went through everything. Um, so if you do have any questions that I can't answer, because there were a lot of them, please post them below, and I will help you out as best as I can. Even if I can't, if I don't have the answer personally, I will find the answer for you. Or just go to your doctor, because doctors normally know best. I hope you have a fantastic day. I know I will. It is nap time. Go snuggle your babies. If you have babies or get ready to snuggle yours because it's coming soon. Hope you have a good day.